Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! EU leaders have reportedly told Britain's former man to the European Union that they'd be prepared to extend the Brexit deadline past March if the country were to agree to a second referendum. Tomorrow, the campaign behind the People's Vote will publish a report which it believes will help answer questions about the viability and indeed democratic worth of such a referendum. The Prime Minister has ruled out any second vote, but those who support it believe the bigger question could be whether Labour Remain supporters succeed in pressurising their leader, Jeremy Corbyn, to allow the country another say. Tomorrow's report is just another in a string of documents produced in a frenzy, all highly contentious for those who believe Brexit means Brexit. Here's Nick Watt. Once in a generation, we've had a say on our place in Europe. When our hair was perhaps too long and our trousers were certainly too wide, we were first asked, did we want to stay? Nearly half a century later, with our fashion and musical tastes a little more refined, we were asked, remain or leave? Though one thing stayed the same. The answer is, we're out. On that timetable, this century would have passed its halfway point before we are asked again. Or could another vote be around the corner? Campaigners claim momentum is building behind a second referendum. People voted to some extent blind. They said, yes, we want to leave uh, the EU, but they didn't say where they wanted to go to. So basically the referendum was about departure, not about destination. And I think the trouble is, frankly, that people were offered a, a wonderful new house, you know, a great mansion, but actually when they came to look at it, it's a pretty tumbled down ramshackle shed with dodgy wiring and no roof. And I think people have got a right to say, hang on a minute, I want to have another say on the actual deal. With strong opposition from Number 10 and a sceptical Jeremy Corbyn, supporters of a second referendum are tomorrow publishing what is billed as a major report. This is designed to answer a series of questions about the viability of a new poll. The UK can have a rethink because it's free to pull the plug on the Article 50 negotiations up until next March, the report says. As for an extension to Article 50, the EU would agree to that to allow a referendum. In exceptional circumstances, Parliament could approve a referendum even if the Prime Minister objected, according to the report. MPs and the Electoral Commission would decide the wording on the ballot paper. But People's Vote say the electorate must be given the option of staying in the EU. So Caroline Lucas, your campaign is called the People's Vote, a sort of an innocent exercise in democracy. But this is just a bunch of Remain supporters trying to overturn the will of the British people. I don't see how you can possibly say that giving people the right to a say on the detail is in any way undemocratic. That, that's, that, that's frankly ludicrous. It is an extension of democracy, not a, not a denial of it, to say to people, once you've got the details, once you've seen the small print, it is for you to say whether or not you actually want to go ahead with that. In so many other aspects of our lives, when we're buying insurance or when we're buying products, you have a cooling off period or you have a period to actually look at the small print. There is so much more, not just small print, but actually extremely large print that has become apparent over the last two years. Things that we know now that we didn't know then. And in that scenario, I think it is right that people should have the final say. Here in Remain Voting Brighton, a second referendum would probably go down a storm. But supporters know they need to win people over way beyond this seafront. They hope to persuade Jeremy Corbyn by the end of the year. That would be a game changer in their eyes. As for the Tories, a close ally of Theresa May told me, maybe a second referendum is the last card we play to avoid a general election. The winners last time are not budging.
We've got real experience of referendums in Scotland. We've had one on independence and then we had one on the European Union. And I think we would all agree that by their very nature, referendums are divisive. They don't bring people together. They can actually tear people apart. And right now, I think those who are actually agitating for another referendum are those who particularly don't like the result, who personally don't want it and would like to see it reversed. That is in no way helpful at all. And if we are to start healing some of the wounds in the country, that involves politicians coming together to enact on the will of the people, which was a choice given to them by Parliament, uh, and now we need to act on their instruction. That would be the best way forward. With a handful of divisive referendums in the UK over the last decade, fatigue may be setting in. But Remain campaigners are determined they will not have to wait a generation to have another say. Well, that was Nick Watt, and joining us now, John Kerr, Lord Kerr, the former UK representative to the EU, is behind the People's Vote, and Gareth Snell, a Remain supporting Labour MP for Stoke, who now wants us to get on with it, get on with Brexit. Nice to have you both. Lord Kerr, you've talked to European leaders. Does anyone actually think this is going to happen in Europe? Uh, the... They don't know. They think it's entirely our business. It's up to us to decide what we do. They wouldn't interfere. They all hope that we will decide that we want to stay. If we wanted to uh, have a, a referendum, a people's vote, it seems to me there's nothing undemocratic about having an exercise in democracy. So I don't understand that argument, nor would they. If we said to them, we would like to extend the two-year period under Article 50 for negotiation. We'd like to extend that in order to have a referendum or a general election. There is absolutely no doubt that they would agree. I'm wondering who you think your constituency is here, though, because if Gareth Snell, who voted Remain, is now m more convinced about Brexit, then you've got a struggle on your hands, haven't you? Well, no, actually, public opinion is swinging very fast, a huge groundswell, towards the people's vote. I'm not saying that the, the, these are, it's clear what the result of that vote would be. There is a small majority at the moment in favour of remaining, okay. but that could change. Let me bring but in what, what up. is clear as, is that people do want to vote by a very large majority, and particularly if there's no deal, they want to be able to give informed consent. Do you accept that, uh, Garrison? I know you had, what, 64% in your constituency voting to leave. Mm. That may well have shifted now. Uh, well, the, the doors I've knocked on over the summer would not suggest there has been any uh, measurable shift away from supporting leaving the European Union. But what Lord Kerr has just demonstrated so admirably is that every time somebody describes a people's vote, they describe a completely different scenario and a different thing they want to put to the public in a vote. And, uh, and he's quite right. This is a matter for the United Kingdom to determine. But we have also determined that we leave the European Union on the 29th of March. That is in law now. And so the choice really would have to be between a deal and no deal. And I don't think anybody wants to advocate that we go out of the European well, Union with no deal. You've skipped out the middle bit, which is giving people a vote on the deal that is before them. Now, that is part of what the people's vote suggests. Would you be in favour of that? Well, that is what some of the people's vote suggests. Now, having spoken to colleagues in the House of Commons, every time you ask them what the question would be, you get a different answer. No one is able to say what that question would be. And given that we are legislatively bound to leave the EU next March, I'm not sure that the questions about staying in the European Union would actually have any particular effect. A Lord Kerr, well, legislatively bound uh, and, that... and bound by the democracy of this country. I wonder whether uh, your efforts to talk to European leaders as a UK ambassador, as a Lord, um, are exactly what many people feared when they thought about our proximity to the yeah, EU. No, no, this, this campaign where I um, helped write this little paper, this is a, a bottom-up campaign. These crowds, these enormous demonstrations and marches, huge increase in the membership of the organisation in the question, serious public opinion pollsters show that there is now a considerable majority right across the country, in every part of the country, can't speak for Stoke on Trent, but in, in every region there is a majority in favour of having a look when we see the outcome of the negotiations. Not today, but we want to be informed and then we want to be asked to give our consent. And surely, Gareth Snell, no. if you voted initially for Remain, 
You have a duty, don't you, to look into your heart and say, do you think what is going to end up on the table will make your constituents richer or poorer? And if you think it will make them poorer, as many on that side suggest, then you should be going back and having another vote. You should be giving that to them. Uh, but the, my, my constituents and parts of the United Kingdom did not feel the benefits of the European Union when we were members of it. So I think that the, the arguments about uh, rich and poor are, are, are something that we need to look at domestically and internally. Or we can do that inside or outside of the European Union. But again, Lord Kerr said there is a majority for a people's vote. I would encourage him to come to Stoke-on-Trent and come to those places that voted leave overwhelmingly, who have not seen any tangible change in their day-to-day -day lives over the last two years that would lead me to believe that they would change their opinion on the European Union. And all we risk doing and is crystallising divisions in our communities and causing, and causing more problems well, uh, that we are not resolving domestically. I worry that what would really crystallise divisions would be Brexit. When we're all a bit poorer, when uh, the JLR predictions, when the IMF predictions, when all that starts to happen... But, and particularly if people haven't agreed, if they haven't given informed consent to whatever it is the government are proposing to do, leave with a deal or leave with no deal, I think that is what would be very socially disruptive. I have to say that our paper is basically a factual paper. We're answering three questions. Mm. We're answering the question, is the die cast? Is it all over? And the answer is no. OK. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.